Uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we'll be soldering our board. We'll be soldering our DSP uh, inverter oscillator board. We'll be soldering it today. So, we'll be soldering our board. So, firstly, we'll be soldering our jumper first. We'll be testing our DSP oscillator board that we designed. And please, while designing your board, make sure the soldering are very effective. As you can see, it has to be a good soldering to avoid anything like open circuit or partial contacts. You need to solder very good. Like, it should be a good soldering. Any kind of wrong soldering or any kind of uh, bad soldering will result to damage of all the components on the board so this is it so the first thing we'll be doing now is to insert our DSP IC first if the system is really working well if you 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 are able to get everything accurate I know you get it accurate so the first thing you do now is to insert your DSP IC after inserting your DSP IC, then we test the board. Now, once we insert our DSP IC and we test the board, if the board is, is working fine, it will beep sound. It will beep sound. It will beep sound. If the board is really working fine, it will beep sound. So, I will teach you how to insert your DSP IC into the DSP socket. This socket we are using for the DSP IC is 28 pin. And this is because the IC, the DSP IC is also a 28 pin socket. So that is why we are using the 28 pin socket because the IC is also 28 pin. So I will teach you how to do that. We are looking at this board. Now, this is one, 
From here to here is 14. From here to here is 28. In 9C, we count this way. That means 14, 15 to 28. We don't count this way. 14, 15, no. We count this way. 14, 15 to 28. So I'll be inserting my I'll be inserting my DSP IC now. Yeah, I've inserted my DSP IC. This is it. I've inserted my DSP IC. I've inserted it. Now I'll be testing the board now. Now I'll be connecting. I'll be using a 12 volt battery. I'll be using a 12 volt battery. 12 volt battery to test. I'll be using a 12 volt battery to test. And I'll be using a two pin two pin connector to test. I'll be using a two pin connector to test. This is it here. Then I'll be using the LCD board to also test. But firstly, I'll be testing the board without using the LCD board. Now, as I said earlier, you can see that this is the ground. This is the ground. And this is the positive. So it's also replicable to here. So the connector I'm using now, this will signify the positive and this will signify the ground. So this is the positive and this is the ground. Now it should be inserted this way. So this is the ground and this is the positive. So we are about to test our DSP board. This is the ground and this is the positive. So this is the positive and this is the negative. So, so we'll be connecting the positive to the positive. The positive terminal of the battery. Then this is the negative terminal. You can see the board is beeping. It means the board is working fine. The board is working fine. You can see it is beeping. So, so this is the temperature sensor. So I'll be inserting the, temp the temperature sensor to the port. This is the port here. I'll be inserting it. Yes, I've inserted the temperature sensor. This is how it looks like. It is also called NTC. So now I'll be I'll be turning on our board back to confirm if it will still write no temperature sensor or not. You can see the board is now working fine now. You can see our battery voltage is 12.3 volts. So the AC in is now on. The AC in is now on. The main charging is also so off. Yes, the system is not ready. You can see we've not we've not done everything for it, but now it is working. So as it is now, the heat, the temperature is all be floating. It will be, yeah, it will be floating, it will be floating, it will be floating for now. So once we turn so we'll be testing our temperature sensor now. We'll be testing our temperature sensor now. We'll be testing our temperature sensor now. can see is icing SS heat it means the temperature sensor is working so thanks for watching our video uh, we've we were uh, we were able to design our system and we've tested it and it is working fine in our next video in our next video we'll be inserting other components like the LM324 Another component also will be inserting them into the pot. Thank you. Another advantage of this board is that you can use it to design 12 volts. You can use it to design 
24 votes. You can use it to design 36 votes. You can use it to design 14 votes. You can use it to design 16 votes. You can use it to design 72 votes. You can use it to design 96 votes up to 120 votes. Now, but in most cases, the ones the, the most popular inverter we see is the 12 votes, the, the 24 votes, the 48 votes, the 96 votes, and the 120 votes. So, this is what is capable of doing all that. All you need to do is to change this, to change this, this current sensor to bigger one and some little components. But this board, as it is now, it will work for 12 volts, it will work for 24 volts.